just two conscious guys talking where conscious male leaders come together and have a discussion that is deep, that is nourishing, that allows us to see the illumination of consciousness that's unfolding progressively for men that are waking up in the world and where you can get insights on your own awakening as a man and also for amazing women that want to learn more about men's challenges and struggles that have created some of the dysfunction we've seen within men in its society, often called, quote unquote, the patriarchy and other terms. What created it? What is the genesis of it all? What can we do about it today to empower men to be all that they're meant to be and to support the awakening of consciousness for men and women and all? Yeah, so Ramon, great to be with you today. And uh, there, there in Kauai, and yeah, it's just beautiful that you your journey has brought you to this beautiful place. You're living in the world today, um, and you know, having a chance to talk, two guys talking. Uh, I know that it's, you know, you you've gone, you know, you're a monk for ten years. You know, that's your claim, one of your claims to fame, at least as an att- one of the attention getters, right? So, like, <laughs> so and now you're a Kauai. That's another attention getter. So. Uh, I love your book, Science of uh, Protection, and really appreciate what you're sharing there. I'm always ta- wanting to talk about how it's a lot more than LOA and all this stuff, and uh, I love that you're into all that and so many things. I could go on and on, but just great to be with you today and to talk talk to you about uh, what it's been like being a guy, you know, taking uh, moving moving forward on this journey. It's uh, I appreciate the opportunity to have this talk, Dan. This is like uh, really timely, I think. I think you're going to have a, a good uh, conversation here and reveal some things that, you know, most guys maybe don't have a thought about. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And um, I know there'll be uh, definitely a number of women that'll be interested in what we have to share today, too. So for you, uh, Ramon, like, uh, curious what it's been like being a Maybe on a little, you know, even if you're a little more sensitive, a little more conscious growing up, right? Like that's what I find. Like some of us are like really sensitive, and some of us like, yeah, it's a little, you know, a little more uh, less cutthroat than some of the other boys, or something like, like a little like more conscientious or whatever. But like be more on the conscious side, you know, from the beginning. What it's been like, you know, growing up. Uh, Probably, I'm guessing, I don't know your whole, that whole background, but in an environment where it's like, you know, push, push a little bit, uh, really masculine kind of energy on you is what I'm guessing and what that's been like, but in ways that maybe didn't feel right to you, right? Didn't always feel like, like really you um, at some points, you know? Uh, so anyway, I want to want to learn about that. Um, what was it like growing up and what male stereotypes did you feel you kind of ran up against that didn't really, you kind of struggled with, you try to maybe could form to, then it's like, oh crap, this doesn't seem right. Or yeah. I'm curious what, what, uh, what your journey has been like in that regard. Yeah, for sure. Great question. So I grew up in New Zealand. So in New Zealand, they say the men are men, you know, and uh, the sheep are scared, basically. <laughs> and, uh, you know, New Zealand men and maybe even Australian men are, are not renowned for great expression of emotion. You know, we're a very kind of like, you know, rugby and and beer and and just, you know, just being a man on the farm sort of thing. And uh, I was... You know, I grew up playing 10 years of rugby and I was into sport and like just very competitive environment, um, track and field and cross country and cricket and tennis and played all, all these sports. I was just a typical Kiwi kid that was very physical and active and and very embracing of that that masculine energy. And, and my, you know, my my father, he was, you know, typical grew up. He was captain of the first 15, which is the first rugby 15 and a uh, very accomplished man in his own right. And, you know, just a good Kiwi man, you know? And he was, he was a great father. Uh, he was all about providing and protecting. And at the same time, you know, he, he wasn't the best and he admits this now, he wasn't the best at, you know, kind of connecting at a, at a deeper level and, 
and emotionally, you know, being there. But um, I have no complaints about that. I mean, that's just where he was and he was a great father otherwise. And we spent a lot of time, you know, traveling to, you know, sports events and stuff like that together. And he was very supportive of me. And so I had a good positive, you know, masculine experience. But then there was the occasion where like, uh, conflict would come up because of, of too much ego, too much competitiveness. Um, and it would get, it would spill over, you know, and, and into semi kind of violent activities, you know, where you're kind of having to stand up for yourself in the playground sort of thing. And, uh, you know, some guys just take their masculine energy too far. And, you know, I was very tolerant and I was just like, I, I wouldn't react. I just let it happen. But then everyone has their breaking point. And so there were some times where I, I had to kind of just hit, you know, hit back, um, not, not in to, to destroy the person, but to just like, hey, it's enough, you know, stop it. You know, so I think masculine energy has a, a very powerful ability to, to protect, but it also has to be careful, you know, where's that fine line between, you know, causing damage and protecting. So, you know, I, I had, had a great experience of that, but I realized that masculine drive was out of control for me when I burnt out as a competitive athlete. And I thought it was all about the action and the accomplishment and, and just driving yourself to achieve and taking all the action you can and necessary to, to make things happen. And that only led, led me to getting very sick. So a lot of respiratory problems, a lot of digestive problems kept me up most nights for over six months. Thought I was insomniac, got very depressed. Um, did the typical, uh, I'll just numb this situation with a bit more drink and a bit more food and a, a bit more dating, whoever seems interested. Uh, but that only compounds things as, as we all know, ultimately. So, and then I realized, okay, I I'm, I'm missing something here. I haven't quite got the full equation here. And that led me to uh, wanting to meditate. I had some, uh, team members. It was actually quite funny because it was around the time in the early nineties where, um, meditation was actually becoming more popular for recovery for, for sports athletes. And so I, I was in a national uh, team of athletes who were winning national titles and, and found out that my running coach, uh, who was an Olympic gold medal winning coach, had his son who was actually a teacher of meditation, transcendental meditation. So oh, I'm, I'm curious about that. What's that all about? And some athletes told me about it and they said, you know, it really slows your mind down, gives you a deeper level of rest that you can't normally get when you're sleeping. And it releases deeper stresses. So you're not so wound up and you're not, you know, compromising your immune system and nervous, nervous system so much. So I said, okay, let, let me, let me experience this. And, and so I did. And the first time I had that experience of really allowing my mind to transcend the conscious and the subconscious and get back to that pure, simple, settled state of awareness, that pure consciousness that we all ultimately are, that I realized, ah, oh, I don't have to run five miles a day to feel like I'm a man or feel like I'm in the zone, you know, it's already there. And it was just a, a, another refine, it was a refinement. Um, I was already a pretty relaxed, chill guy, but this was like another level of that, you know, and I realized where, you know, the deeper level of balance comes from, you know, uh, between the, the silent part of ourselves and, and the active part of ourselves. And so that was a very, very integrating experience of, of not being so intense, you know, the masculine energy is quite intense. So being able to just actually get to the source of masculine energy, which is interesting, was that masculine energy ultimately is a stable, silent reality. You know, we're expected to be the rock, the stable, you know, uh, calm influence in the environment for the feminine, you know, so that it can dance and play and, and feel protected in that energy. And so it was interesting coming home to that experience, the source of masculine energy, that silent value, and realize that's where my real power is from, you know, and it's a, it's a, it's a strong, peaceful energy, but it doesn't mean it doesn't take, take away from your masculine energy. It actually makes it more, shall we say, balanced or holistic. Yeah, totally. Totally. Oh, man, that was great. So thanks for sharing all that. And yeah, I mean, what I was hearing as far as like, where some of the, you know, like two, two different, well, at least two different things, like uh, I wanted to come back to was you talk about some, you know, issues where other boys or, you know, whatever age you were, but like the, the, the guy, you know, the boys, they want to be boys. And then they, they get a little carried away. Maybe yeah. start pushing around a little too much, a little bit too much of this or that. 
Would you say it was just kind of just just what 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 boys were doing at the time? Like that's just how it kind of was, or would you say like you did you ever feel like you specifically were being a little extra targeted for some reason or anything like that? I'm just curious about that because there's a number of guys, not all of them, but a number of the guys have told me like, yeah, there's like a lot of like a fair amount of bullying or something like that and, and things like that. So I'm curious how you took it at the time, or if you're just like, hey, is this boys being boys or, or how, you, how you looked at it at the time? Yes, yeah, it's a really interesting question because I saw a quote recently that said, uh, guys criticize each other and give each other a hard time, but don't mean it. And women, you know, are very good at complimenting each other, but sometimes they don't mean it also. <laughs> <laughs> so so we, we have a different way of relating. I guess it's just the difference between a, a feminine energy and a, and a masculine energy. And initially, you know, I, I thought it was fun. You know, it was just like guys, you know, giving, giving each other a, a fun time and not taking each other too seriously and, and, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But then it got to a point where you realize, ah, oh, this guy's actually, actually got an edge. He's actually trying to push you down in order to make him himself feel better and have a better esteem about himself which is a really weird way to do it right but uh so i i got to the point where i would tolerate it up to a certain point and then if it got in, if i felt like you know it was getting beyond that then naturally i'd push back you know mm -hmm. and or or I'd just just disassociate from that that person or have some space or something like that so yeah it was it was kind of like a very in the moment thing well i i could tell okay he's we're just we're just having a fun time as guys you know giving giving each other some you know humbling experiences uh to keep out keep that in some ways it's a bit of an ego check you know the masculine energy kind of checks each other's egos in a, in a fun way but sometimes it can get out of kilter you know and obviously we witnessed that this week um yeah you know, at the oscars you know like Time of this recording yeah <laughs> yeah that that masculine energy you know it's it uh got a little bit um pent up and obviously there's a lot behind all what happened at, at the oscars mm -hmm. uh but i think there's there's some definitely some working out between the masculine energy and, and and the feminine energy that was also involved in that yeah yeah totally yeah with will smith's uh, yeah, the, the experience the, we saw of him smacking Chris Rock, you know, on stage there after there was a joke that uh, towards his wife that, um, well, it's a whole other story, but it looked like his wife took offense to and uh, therefore he took offense to. So, <laughs> yeah, well, it was it was an interesting dynamic because, uh, I mean, like that's the thing being a comedian, you know, there's, there's a fine line between making people laugh and, and offending people. And obviously, for whatever the Dalek dynamic that was going on between those three, it, it, it went over the, the limit there. And, you know, initially there was a reaction from Will that he, he ah, oh, this is just my, my, my guy joking about my wife. And it's kind of funny, but oh, oh she's not happy about it. Right. And the funny thing was, is there's a video when she was talking about this alopecia that she, uh, she was saying she was accepting it. She was embracing it. She was feeling more self-love for herself despite of it. Um, but she was still affected by it. And, and that just goes to show how, how delicate that feminine energy is, you know? And so, you know, Will obviously reacted in a way that was, you know, beyond what was probably required, you know? I, it may have been better if he'd, you know, just kind of not been impressed or not not laughed and then maybe talk to him afterwards. Or maybe he just walked up on stage, hey, guy, can we just... Who's got the good jokes in my wife? She's not feeling good about it. And then just walk back down, you know? Mm -hmm. That would have been a more controlled masculine response, I would, would have thought. Um, but he just went to, to the, the most brutal form of masculine response. Yeah, I mean, the funny thing is, yeah, there's endless hours of people talking about this, but it is fascinating, right? Um, it's like this little microcosm of something happened with people that, you know, uh, are just really well known and all that stuff at a big stage. So... But it was, yeah, what's fascinating, there's so many fascinating aspects of it, right, the study and take yeah. a look at and um, yeah, but yeah, that uh, feeling of like, uh, I've got to do something about it. I mean, uh, you know, like for for Will, I mean, I, you know, if anybody that's studied about his life at all, like, I mean, you know, like his dad was like, what, a Marine 
Marine guy and all that and abuse, abusive towards his mom. And it, it was his big thing. He always felt guilty. He didn't stand up for his mom. And mm. it, was, it was a jokey, yeah. you know, funny guy and everything. So, you know, here was a prime moment in a big stage to show that he's going to stand up finally, right? Like, right. that's how I saw it. Like, I just saw like, okay, this masculine energy is coming out. It's coming out big time. I don't care how big the stage is. So I, I thought that was, I, so to me. It, it, was, it, it was trying to re- correct all the wrongs. Of the right, 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 right. His manhood had been violated because, you know, the, the wife had had some extramarital stuff going on and she yeah. confessed that she was still in, still in, you know, had affections for Tupac who's not even alive. You know, and that I guess that just built up in him. He goes, he was like, I mean, I've seen in interviews where he's like, okay, you know, I'm, I'm understanding, but I think it got to his point where he just feels like he's not being respected as as the man he wants to be respected for, and it was just, uh, you know, his way of trying to balance that, but obviously it, it wasn't the right way, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but it's a great learning moment. Uh, yeah, no, I, I think it's a great learning moment for the world because, you know, we're also seeing what's going on in Russia. That's another masculine energy out of control, you know, and I think there's a lot of stress about the masculine energy right now that is coming to the surface to be seen and to be dealt with, you know, and, and to be purified. Uh, yeah. So I think ultimately it's all good. I mean, it's unfortunate it's, it's being expressed violently, but sometimes that nature has to, hey, we need to address this. And this is why it's, it's causing a lot of damage. Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. You know, for your journey, maybe more so growing up, I'm wondering if you really felt like it was safe to show more of the vulnerable side is probably more where if there was more of an issue, like some guys, it's like they didn't, maybe they didn't bring, bring their masculine edge um, that much or at all, or who knows, like it all varies for each guy, but um, but for you, I don't know, like, what was your connection with um, the feminine energy growing up? Oh, I, I had great experiences with women. Uh, it was already always a kind of enjoyable experience. I didn't, I mean, there were, there was times where, you know, relationship didn't work out and that gets complicated and, and, and frustrating, but during you know growing up through through high school into my 20s it was it was always a fun experience for me and I, and I think it was fun for me because it was balancing you know I was very much into my physical masculine vibe at the time as an athlete and then just having that gentle influence of a feminine energy kind of took some edge off me you know and just allowed me to be, be a lot more balanced with with my masculine energy so that's why you know, I value the feminine in my life so much because I don't want to be so out of balance, you know, with my masculine energy. You know, I want it to be be even keeled and and you know not at, not ruling me. You know, like I'm in control of it and it's not in control of me. Right, right, yeah. Because that's what it sounds like. What happened for you? You're you're like, hey, I'm having a good time. I'm good with the masculine and all that. But then, you know, like Will Smith, or you know, like is an is an extreme maybe extreme like one time example right there in that moment but like it, it shows up in some sort of way so for you it showed up as like a like really as a burnout you significant burnout you know when you're honest about it, right like it was really a significant yeah. burnout and, and yeah. being that energy and not not as connected to the the peace and the the deeper feminine yeah. energy if we want to call it that yeah well, the fe- what, what guys have to realize is the feminine energy, both in themselves and, and external to themselves, is very healing. It's, v- it's like rejuvenative. It's, it's, it soothes out the stresses, you know. They, they talk about, when they talk about uh, like Venus, the planet Venus, which represents beauty and femininity and feminine expansion and stuff like that. And they talk about in terms of laws of nature, Venus is the teacher of the demons, and go, okay, well, why is Venus the teacher of the demons? Well, Venus personifies harmony and peace and beauty. So when the demons, let's say the, the aggressive masculine energy or ego um, sees beauty, you just go, ah, oh, why do I need to feel so aggressive? This life is beautiful, you know, right. people are beautiful, you know, and, and it just, just soothes them out. So, you know, that's why, you know, we want to have, uh, respect and obviously um, cultivation for that feminine energy in ourselves and in others because it's going to help us rejuvenate our masculine energy mm-hmm. you know so that we can use it wisely yeah 
So, so for me, like when I look at male stereotypes, I bet, I bet know, knowing it or not, like what you were dealing with is you can't show any weakness. I think it's a universal one that yeah. guys really suffer from, right? You don't, don't show any weakness. Like, I feel like that's so strong that <clears throat> some of us like to this day are continuing to, even as being more conscious, it's so, you know, almost like feels like it's uh in our dna almost right like kind of thing like right? you don't know don't show too much vulnerability you get massacred you know like that kind of thing this is this is this is an interesting really interesting question because there's a lot of discernment i think required around this yeah uh from my point of view from my experience you know i've been involved in men's group uh, Sterling Men's Group. I did uh, the men's weekend back in what, 1994, January 94 in Boston. And it was basically a weekend where, you know, men from all around the country come and we're just talking about men's stuff and men relationships, not just with each other, but, you know, our, our spouses or girlfriends or partners or um, mother and father even, you know. And so it's a very powerful weekend, you know, like when masculine energy gets together, it's it's very, very powerful. But there was also, you know, uh, a time there where we got to look at our stuff, you know, and we got to, to share it, you know, with other fellow men. And it was like a safe, safe space where you wouldn't be judged by maybe the feminine for being weak or being seen to be weak. So I've, you know, kind of cultivated my, cultivated my own philosophy that men should you know, definitely create space with other men to be vulnerable. And we should be vulnerable with, with our feminine cohorts. But I think in a way that we don't want to turn it into like they're our therapist, that they're there to heal us, right? They're more here just to kind of, you know, hear us and, and know that we're, we're human. And, and through that, they gain connection. They feel connection to us. But I don't think we should be like processing and metabolizing emotions too much with our, our feminine code because it's too much for them. You know, this you know, it can be overwhelming to them, too much for them. But if you do it amongst fellow men, then I feel like it's a, a safer and more strengthened place to do that. So that's how I, I tend to distinguish, you know, when to show vulnerability um, and not, not get too, uh, too emotionally um, processing with, with my partner. You know, I prefer that to do that with men. Yeah, let's dig into that more, like, because that's, that's fascinating to me. So yeah, I mean, like, you know, for, so you feel like you literally can process more deep and in-depth emotions with men versus with women, or it just feels more appropriate, or tell me more about it. Uh, I just feel it. it's like men have the, maybe have a little bit of better perspective uh, to understand you from yeah. a masculine energy, because I, you know, when we relate between male and male, it's, it's a different energy, the way we relate, you know, like men tend to like to be very direct and truthful, you know, with each other, each other and women are maybe, it's maybe too harsh for them to, to communicate like that. Right. Mm -hmm. And so there's a different mechanics of understanding. You know, I had a situation uh, a year or so ago where there was a complication going on uh, and her perspective like there was another guy involved and her perspective on the situation was that if i addressed this this person it was going to really mess him up and but when i actually went directly to him he like he like was straight up with me he said oh man i, I really appreciate you doing this you know i'm so sorry this happened da, 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 da. and it was just a different energy of communication that we had but women don't understand that sometimes that that line of communication that we have between ourselves as men, mm -hmm. you know, and it's a, a different dynamic in terms of how we relate with women. Mm -hmm. So that's why, you know, I, I tend to favor, you know, if I've got, you know, issues, uh, stuff that I feel vulnerable about, I prefer, to, prefer, first of all, to work it out with my male circle, and then I'm happy to share it with my, with my woman. Mm -hmm. uh, understand what also I'm going without having to do the the deep purging with her you know uh-huh uh -huh. yeah 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 especially in your relationship with with your partner you know not just necessarily just women in mass like <laughs> just you know necessarily but I I hear yeah. you especially in that that relationship with your partner or your wife or whatever may be the yeah. case mm -hmm. yeah and like one of the things I learned from the weekend is you know let a woman know how you feel so she can understand where you're at but don't necessarily get into why 
you know, mm-hmm. just, just let her respond based on that one little bit piece of information, you know, yeah. sometimes it's, you know, it does, she doesn't need to know why, you know, mm-hmm. unless, unless there's obviously something significant, but mm-hmm. it's more just like women like to feel that you're available and then, and, and let them know what you're feeling so they can just have a little more perspective on what you're going through, you know, right. without having to like churn it out with them, you know, like, even though I'm here in you know, beautiful Kauai, Hawaii, you know, we've got neighbors a couple of things away, we can hear them arguing. And they literally went 12 rounds the other day. You know? <laughs> wow. It was like, you know, he was locked out of the house and he was banging on the door and like, she wasn't letting him in. And it was just like, okay, do we need to call the cops here or not? But we just kind of had a good intentions for him. And, and today has calmed down, but it's like, you know, they, they were going through a lot. You know, they were, and I, and somehow as part of me was like, man, I wish I could talk to that guy. Maybe if he just had another guy to talk to um, and be vulnerable with him, then he would be able to approach the situation with her in a better way. Right. Yeah. That's so true. That's uh, that, 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 that totally resonates. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. I totally get that. Yeah. I mean, getting back to the, the, the sharpness thing. Yeah. I do find that those male egos with the clashing sometimes when they, you know, they can clash and it's like, okay, and I'm going to rise up and I'm going to be stronger than you or all that. You mentioned, we were talking about that earlier. The, the, the battle to be the top alpha. Yeah. Right. Got to be the alpha, right? You got to be the top of the top and all that stuff it is a, is a very fast, it makes t- total sense. I mean, it makes very logical sense there why that happens. Uh, yeah. And also what you're saying about just communication, like the directness of communication, where it, when it's met, you know, a man to a man, typically, I, and I think, I think it varies person to person a lot, but I, I do see what you're saying. It's like, I was at uh, dinner, just dinner last night. There I am uh, with the, the, my two girls and uh, my wife, Deb. And I just like, she's just like, hey, I've got this uh, extra part of my sandwich left over. Would you like it? I'm like, I, I don't know exactly what I said, but I was like, yeah, I'd lo- yeah, I'd love to have it or whatever. Like I said, it in a like a strong way. Yeah, a guy would be like, "Oh, cool, here you have it." Right? Yeah. She's like, "Oh my God, you're being you know two of them, two out of three. You're like, you're being so aggressive. What is that all about?" I'm like, <laughs> "I just, I'm just saying, I'd like to say, I was trying to be aggressive. I'm just saying, yeah, all right, I'll take yeah. it." Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, almost mean and aggressive, and you know, I'm like, oh my god, I didn't really see it that way, but okay. I mean, like, <laughs> yeah, we're like, definitely more abrupt and more direct, and, and it's a bit jarring to their nervous system because they have a more yeah. refined nervous system, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I really saw that there, and I, I've been getting a little sharper, quite honestly, um, because uh, I think I've been so sensitive to it because I've been around so many women for so long in my case that I've just kind yeah. of. Just softening things all the time right now I'm, I'm being more of who really like my natural way of being and it's like wait a minute well, what's going on with you you're a lot sharper lately and uh, you know if we like it right <laughs> so it's an interesting experience um so yeah I really that, that's interesting about that that fluctuation you know sometimes we we're more full-on in the masculine and sometimes we're you know, maybe close to using our feminine energy to deal with things or, mm-hmm. and it can even based on location, you know, like mm-hmm. I was in this monastic environment um, for 10 years and it was like nice lush mountains and, and forests around us. And it was kind of very much of that, that feminine energy and very settled and, and things like that. Um, it was more of a, a quiet, you know, masculine energy. Uh, but then I went to New York City to do an acting program after that. And it was just like drive, I, you know, that, that masculine energy got activated to me again. And I think that's why I went there because I got, I'd been so much in the like the unbounded value of, of myself and which is very flowy and, and just settled and stuff like that. And somehow my physiology wanted to be in a place where I could get grounded in that masculine energy again because I wanted to be in the world again. So therefore I had to accomplish things. Mm-hmm. And so I was there for a couple of years just to kind of get back to that. Now I'm in Hawaii where I'm like, I've been in LA for the last 12 years, which is a lot of, you know, ambition and desire and drive going on there. And I have okay, I've done my stint there. And now I want to be in Hawaii and just, you know, achieve in a, in a more balanced way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right, right. Yeah, that is fascinating. I mean, the different, the journey we have with the feminine masculine energy. Yeah, it's, it's really cool. The integration that you you really uh, reached uh, 
pretty pretty <laughs> awesome level of integration is what that sounds like. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah, that's what happens. I think ultimately, as as we continue to grow and evolve, we are just being more bas- uh, balanced between both. But still, we we're going to identify with one more than the other. Mm-hmm. But I think it's integrating with both ultimately. Yeah, yeah, totally. I mean, so when you found meditation, which that's so cool, like oh, it got to be like a good thing for performance. I was I was into this idea of meditation. <laughs> that was your entry into it. <laughs> yeah, I think that's yeah. so cool. That reminds me. Of, Kobe Bryant, right? He was always, he was so into the masculine. And we're, no, 24 7, I'm shooting more, more hoops, I'm lifting weights, I'm doing everything. I don't rest at all. No, yeah. no, no feminine, none, zero. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and he had to have his trainer tell him, you need sleep, you need this quit practicing so much. And then when he embraced that, it helped his longevity and increased yep. his performance every and all everything and one of the things he incorporated too was meditation he's like oh yeah i've discovered this cool thing I meditate 10 20 minutes and it does me wonders really clears my mind you know so it's interesting that um how the masculine might want to first like totally like even when women right like i don't have time for all that crap you know sit around you know getting still what's that for it doesn't do anything it's a waste of time yeah <laughs> No, not, not realizing that it actually makes your masculine more powerful and more efficient. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that, you're an expert in that stuff, right? So it's like, so tell us about that. How does that make the masculine more efficient rather than just kind of be like, oh, yeah, we know that. But like, <laughs> tell us more about that. How does it do that? Well, so if we wanted to relate it to business, you know, like, you know, there's a lot of masculine energy involved in, in business and, and leadership and stuff like that. And you know, obviously, there's more feminine energy coming into the mix these days, which is fantastic. Um, you like seeing a lot more women coming onto boards and stuff like that. And that's actually very healthy because it is balancing that, that masculine energy. And so, you know, if you're in a position of leadership, you know, you got to you make the business perform, and that requires leadership energy, leadership performance. And but where does that really that leadership performance come from? It comes from someone with a very clear expanded awareness has a capacity of awareness and the ability to unify things and be coherent within themselves and what they do with others you know with the marketplace and you know be able to you know have the creative ideas you know which is actually a feminine creativity is more of a feminine thing and so be able to find ways to you know stop negativity from or problems you know getting in the way creativity and, and creating opportunities uh, and also being able to, you know, handle what's going on, be it great negativity or great positivity. You have to have a capacity, you know, of awareness to know how to deal with these situations. And these are all very subtle subconscious things, you know, below the surface of action, you know, and the leader that, that has the clarity, that has the coherence, that has the creativity, that has the capacity, that is able to be a good catalyst to spark things to happen in their environment and their marketplace and to be able to capitalize. And, you know, the way I look at capitalize is capitalize means your market or your environment supports your actions, you know, and, and that's, uh, is a dynamic of energy. That's a vibration, you know, no one's going to support really wants to support a leader who's angry and uptight and stressed and, and just causing a lot of bad energy. Um, the environment wants to support someone that, that feels like is supporting them and nourishing them and uplifting them and giving them opportunities. And then capitalization, you know, happens. And so it's more these, you know, they call them soft skills, you know, whatever you want to call them, but they're the intangibles, you know, the unseen values of things that is ultimately creating the best seen outcomes that we see on the surface. And so the more that, you know, a man is able to connect to the source of those qualities, which is really in consciousness. So we can call it leadership consciousness, which is having that awareness, having the knowledge, the right knowledge, uh, the right thought, the right time to be in tune with nature and the laws of nature and to, you know, have that silence, you know, so you're not disturbed by all that information and, and chaos that's going on in the surface of life. You know, you're able to see your way through it all. So that's a, uh, you know, a subtle development. It's an inner development, you know, and we saw, you know, just to come back to the, the Will Smith incident, we saw a man at the peak of outer achievement in his life, in his career, 
getting the the one award that he hadn't won that he'd always wanted to win and he was finally winning it you know and there was a fantastic outer achievement and outer development for him at the same time we saw an exposure of his inner development yeah you know? and this is why you know leaders men everyone as much as we want to have that outer development out of fulfillment out of achieve, outer achievement outer of fulfillment we also have to take care of the inner development and the inner fulfillment because negativity can literally derail all that positive outer development in seconds you know negativity is very powerful you know we know it takes years maybe you know multiple years to build a skyscraper a huge building yet in one day they can put some dynamite in that and just drop that thing you know right. Right. Sure. So this is why we protect our outer development and our outer accomplishment and our outer fulfillment through our inner development and our inner fulfillment through our mind being coherent and settled and at peace and our heart is full and content and open. Mm -hmm. And then we have, have a true balance, you know, and a true foundation for protection. And this is ultimately what men, you know, our primary duty, if we really break it down is to protect. Okay, and I don't mean overly protective where we don't take risks or we don't we stop people from doing things because we want to control them. Mm -hmm. I mean that we're able to protect the progress and the evolution of ourselves and our people and the world and the environment, you know. Mm -hmm. So this this is the power of the masculine energy at its highest level. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, well, thus, you know, I was just thinking thus uh, the science of protection, right? So, I mean, we can have. So you think about like uh, you studied it more than I have, but people have reached these incredible heights of achievement. Yeah, it varies different, you know, what what happens there on the inner level. But you could be like, okay, again, this is my project. I mean, it may not be accurate, but it seems this way. It could be a Rockefeller. Uh, you know, we're like, we're going to use uh, use up everything we can. You know, we're going to make it the max profit. We're gonna, it doesn't matter how it affects other people so much as we get done what we want to get done here. Yeah. And, uh, um, you know, so that could maybe, yeah, maybe you got like all the wealth and the sense of power, but what's that doing to the um, consciousness? What's that doing to your consciousness, right? So that's where we have the problems to clean up later. Yeah. Um, you know, long after that person dies, yeah, they have their like, well, they're so great. They did all this now, but look at the mess we've got at the same time. Whereas you have your examples of people with the, the great inner and outer uh, development, you know, whoever examples you want to talk about there, but you have those, those, those people and maybe a Wayne Dyer or something like that, or, you know, whatever examples you want to give, they have more of both, and then they can leave a legacy that actually is contributing to the consciousness, not something like, oh my God, we, although it's good in one way, it's horrible in another. And, you know, like with, it's got a legacy that, that lives on, or Bob, Bob, Bob Proctor to some degree, right? I mean, Absolutely. people have different opinions about him, but so yeah, it's, 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 that's why what I do love about your work is, and it, it does totally re relate to what we're talking about here, the, the balance of like feminine and masculine energy and the um, need for that. And so we're all on a journey with that, you know, all those men and, and women too, um, we're yeah. on a journey with that. And it seems to have something to do with what we're meant to, you know, it's huge and uh, what we're meant to be exploring and learning and, you know, well, the, 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 this is this is this is uh, it's really interesting you bring this up because, you know, we're talking about legacy here and 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 what is legacy really? Well, it's basically how how you feel at the end of your life, you know. Yeah. And I, at the end of life, we, when you have to let go of this body, what are you gonna what are you gonna be left with? You're gonna be left with the amount of love in your heart and your level of consciousness. Mm -hmm. And so, if someone's really achieved on an outer level but hasn't really developed or experience the fulfillment on the inner level, mm -hmm. then they're going to take that vibration with them, you know, and who knows where, where that takes them. Right. Mm -hmm. And we're, we're talking pretty cosmic, cosmic level here, but you know, at the, at the end of the day, you know, the universe really doesn't care what we want or desire, you know, it, it's responding to who we are and, and our vibration, you know? So the law of attraction, you know, is really based on the law of vibration. So if we want to attract something in our life, then we have to be vibrating at that level that naturally allows it to be attracted. Whereas 
if masculine energy is out of control and it just wants to attract, you know, what it wants, then, and that it can lead to forcing. And when you force something, you know, you, it's like anything you gain by force, you'll lose by force, you know? So it's more important that you get the, the vibration and the energy, right? And then naturally the attraction comes and you get to keep it and protect it. You know, it's protected. You know, it's not going to be taken away from you. So, you know, there's all these, there's all these things in life that we think are required of us as men, you know, we need this, we need that, we need to create this and need to do that. But at the end of the day, when we strip all that away, the only, there's only really one thing that the universe is asking from us. And that is to, to show love, you know, and I've, I've learned that in my own relationships is like, and I, and I learned this initially from my father through his his example and him doing the best as a man was that he was all about the protecting and providing so he would work long hours he would come home late he you know he'd, he'd be a bit tired and stressed and, and, and stuff like that and he didn't really have much else to give in terms of, of of emotional connection and so it's you know we have to do that as men if we're going to play that role as in a head of a family but at the same time you know, what, what is the wife or your partner um, and your kids really want to receive from you? They want to feel loved, you know, and it's sometimes it's a tough job for man, a man to show love because they're so bound by the responsibility of protecting and providing. Yeah, totally. I mean, I, I know like my, my dad wasn't uh, head of the household um, the, the entire time at all. I mean, he in our early life he was and then my mom became the one making all the money and he wasn't really making any money even though he was still working he had his own business that wasn't working out so well but you know he had that I know especially when he was working he just had that sense of he get home like so many men uh, especially I would say men they get home and they're just like literally stereotype turn on the tv put up your feet you know like not every day but like you know i'm just saying overall that vibe like yep. you know get out a bag of potato chips you know you'd have like you know whatever you know whatever you wanted to eat and just your dad, your dad must be on the same relax, program. Right? your dad must be on the same program as mine yeah right, right. I, I used to i used to sit with them i used to sit with them we watched the rugby right exactly better chips together and then, and then occasionally you know i take a sip of his beer you know? yeah 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 and that was that way of connecting you know yeah exactly i mean we didn't talk about much anything just what's on the tv right i mean usually yeah. i mean i did have conversations with my dad but a lot of times not at all like we're just watching the game and oh hey that was good or whatever just talking about the game and yep. hanging out that's what we would do so to this day like I feel like one of the reasons I'm interested in it authentically, but one of the reasons I, I watch sports and a little bit and listen to commentary, like way beyond what I, what, what even makes any sense. It's like, it's just because I feel like I'm connecting with male energy and guys. And like when I'm around guys, it's like, Hey, how about, you know, that team? You know, I, I, yeah. You know, what about that goalie? You know, or whatever it yeah. is, you know, yeah. it, it, like how he's doing it. Yeah. When he can't seem to reach this angle or that angle or what that could be some, even some like silly little stupid thing, but like, that's what we get into as guys, right? Like we get into all, all these uh, kind of things and it's a yeah. way. Of and I, I, I think it's like, you know, that's our way of like starting on the surface. And then you can use those opportunities to go. Yeah, exactly. Deeper in the exactly. Like, you know, often, you know, as guys, we will ask each other, you know, how you doing? And we'll go, I'm good. I'm good. And then, so I got a friend, uh, Philip Robson. He's uh, founded this organization called Saving Brothers. I don't know if you've, you've seen them. And uh, yeah, yeah, I interviewed him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, he did. Awesome. So he's got the question. He, sa he says, he doesn't really ask, ask guys how they're doing. He says, on a scale of one to ten, how are you doing? Yeah, and 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 if, and and a guy will go, oh, I'm about a three. And then the, the next question is really the, the kicker. He'll go, when was the last time it was an eight? And wow. a lot of guys will go, can't remember. Wow. You know. And so his 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 whole thing is keep five alive. You know, because there's a lot of men that are under so much pressure as a man that it deciding to take their lives. Yeah. And he's trying to put an end to that by you know helping brothers save brothers sort of thing yeah so you know it's um you know because the interesting dynamic i think we're also playing with here with is, is the dynamic with the feminine energy in terms of like 
okay, the feminine energy wants to feel loved, right? So as a man, I mean, this is, this is coming out of the Bible from what I've understood, is that the role of a man from a biblical point of view is to show love to the woman. Now, it doesn't say in the Bible for a woman to show love to the man. It actually says to show respect. So therefore, a man has to be a man worthy of being respected. You know, and so that means, you know, as best we can, you know, we, we have ourselves together mentally, emotionally, spiritually, physically, financially, materially, you know, so that a woman will naturally respect you. Because if a woman doesn't respect us, how can she really love us? Because as a feminine, they're, they're waxing and waning, you know, mm -hmm. so their love is like this. I mean, she's fully in love with you. Next minute, she's, she's not. <laughs> right. but, if, but if she respects you, then that love is more likely to be consistent. You know, right. right. From her side. Whereas as men, we tend to be a bit more grounded, you know, so therefore we can naturally be a reservoir of, of love if we're not stressed. You know? Right. It's like, yeah, of course I love you. You know, I mean, like these conversations come up. It's like, I was asked, you know, like, well, will you love me if this happens or that happens or this? And uh, it's like, yeah, why do you even ask? Like, you know, like, uh, well, you know, like there's that, that, that sense of like, I got to know and, you know, all that. Whereas I would just assume like, well, uh, you, you would love me in these situations still, wouldn't you, dear? I mean, <laughs> I would assume their like- love, Their love fluctuates. Whereas right. our love's a little more steady. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah. so they're actually reflecting what they're experiencing and then projecting onto us, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it, it's, it's so fascinating, so fascinating. It's amazing. So anyway, uh, there's so many things we could talk for hours, I'm sure. There's, uh, man, there's so many things, but we covered a number of things, a lot of cool stuff. So I appreciate that, uh, Ramon, and appreciate your, you as a man and, you know, all you had to share today was uh, really wonderful, very insightful. You've got great, great things to share. So, so thank you so much. Yeah, no, it's, it's been, a, it's been a joy. Uh, it's interesting, you know, you're a, uh, Hannah Mann, is it, is it M-A-N, your last name? And I'm a new man, so we're, we're definitely our own unique versions of, of men. And I have to, every day, I reminded of my last name. And I say, you have to be a new man today. You have to you have to be a new and better man today. So That's great. Yeah. yeah, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Yeah, it's right in our last name. Isn't that, a, isn't that fun? <laughs> yeah. well, what does is, what is Hannah, Hannah mean, if we break it down? What it, oh, you know, what I've learned before, all I know is like, they always say, um, I'd have to look it up again. I'm not great on memory on stuff like that. Yeah. But I always like everybody thinks like Hanoman, uh, the uh, Hanuman or whatever, the uh, monkey Hanuman. god. Right? Yeah, Hanuman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're yeah, the messenger. The You're the messenger. Experience and all that kind of stuff. So I imagine I th probably similar meeting, but um, because it's Hanu, Hanu, Hanu in Sanskrit means jaw. So like the strong jawed one, like the courage, courageous one who's, who's bringing the message, who's bringing people back to the truth sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. So no, no small, no small Dharma there. No small duty there. Yeah. Yep. 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 We got to persevere here, man. Okay. Well, thank you so much again, Raymond. This is really awesome. And I uh, look forward to talking to you again sometime real soon, my friend. You bet. Thanks so much, Dan. Appreciate the time with you. Thank you for listening in to Just Two Conscious Guys Talking, where our mission is to impact millions of men ultimately to deepen their awakening by examining their consciousness of what's been unfolding for them with male stereotypes and programming that has allowed them to have opportunities to evolve during these times. It's an exciting time to bring more love to men and women around the world. And we are grateful for you tuning in today. Feel free to share this episode and keep tuning in. And also look in the show notes for a link to get notifications of future episodes. Until the next time, everyone. Goodbye for now.